Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Hi, welcome to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media flagship program. We go out to all the great enterprise shows, help extract the signal from the noise. I'm Stu Miniman, joined by Brian Gracely, and we're at Red Hat Summit 2016. It's the 12th year of the show, it's the third year uh, that theCUBE has been honored to cover it. Uh, we are here in the lobby of Moscone West. Uh, right behind us here is the Expo Pavilion. Uh, if you're one of the over uh, 5,200 people at the show, stop on by and see us. We're going to be broadcasting for three days here. Uh, we've got all the keynote speakers, uh, big you know, innovation customer winners, uh, you know, and uh, you know, lo lots of partner uh, people here. Uh, really excited to be here. It's my third year doing the show, um, and uh, the th third different host I've had with me. We were, two years ago, we were over in Moscone South. Uh, John Furrier's here, he's uh, over in San Jose right now. Um, last year we were back in Boston, and Brian, it's your first year at the show, so uh, what do you think so far? So far it's been, it's been very good. Like you said, you know, just short of 5,500 people, a lot of energy, uh, really good keynotes this morning. Uh, you know, Jim Whitehurst laid out, you know, sort of a, you know, he laid it out last year in the book, this year he laid out a vision for, you know, how do you move your business forward? How do you take advantage of communities? How do you take advantage of open? Uh, great follow-up keynote uh, by, by Target talking about their transformation. So, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things going on in terms of, of energy, uh, you know, open source. We've talked about open source from a Wikibon perspective here on theCUBE a lot. Uh, you know, it's one of the really big kind of keystone things that's driving the industry. So this is one of the kind of premier shows in terms of saying, what's going on with open source? What's going on with community? How does it become effective in the enterprise? So a lot of, we're excited to be here. Yeah, so, so Brian, you know, not only do you have the beard, but you're heavy into the developer space. Uh, Red Hat's the first two billion dollar open source company. And when the company talks about growth, it's things like OpenShift, it's what's happening in containers. Uh, their, uh, Red Hat is, you know, big contributors to uh, both uh, OpenStack and Kubernetes. Uh, so, but yeah, Brian, what, what do you see? What, what are some of the, the, the big areas of, of growth and potential for Red Hat and this ecosystem? Yeah, I think, you know, we've said this for a long time, because we cover a lot of, we get to cover a lot of shows. We cover DockerCon and OpenStack Summit and uh, a lot of the different things that are going on. You know, the challenge for a lot of these companies, enterprise companies, mid-sized companies, governments, is they're looking at all this technology. People say, hey, you should try and be like Facebook and be like Google, and they go, well, that sounds great, but the technology's complicated. It moves really fast. You upgrade it every couple of months. That's not how we do things. Um, Red Hat has been able to capitalize on that. Not only uh, are they you know, heavy contributors in these space, so they're not just sort of picking up the technology and packaging it, but they're then making it simpler for companies. So, uh, you know, huge opportunity for them. Uh, you know, like we see, you know, we're seeing 20% growth at this show, and a lot of enterprise shows, we're seeing some flatness. Um, I think that's, you know, giving us some data points that, that we are seeing this shift away from proprietary software, uh, hardware-defined things, to more software-defined things, more open source, and, and the companies that are going to help customers every sort of step of the way have, you know, big opportunities to continue to grow. Yeah, uh, one of the things, we're going to have Jim Whitehurst on in a couple of minutes. Uh, he gave a little bit of a history lecture, uh, and uh, he, he also was talking about just hierarchies. And one thing he said, we really understand this, the things that allowed companies uh, to, to really grow in earlier industrial revolutions, um, that hierarchy are actually the things that are, gonna, that are stopping us from innovation and growth going forward. Uh, he, you know, Jim wrote a book we talked about a lot, lot last year. Uh, it's a very different hierarchy. Uh, they said Red Hat, when they made their mission statement, it's not that they are a leader, and of course they are part of the community, but they said they want to be a catalyst for them, and uh, that, that idea of open innovation and, and working through you know, much larger communities and working with their customers and their partners is something we've been talking about for lots of years, but Brian, very few companies actually can deliver on that. You know, what, what, right. what's, your, what's your take? Yeah, I, you know, we're, we see tons and tons of VC money pour into companies that, that say, hey, we're an open source company, we're going to start as open source. Uh, you know, very few of them are, are actually making money in the industry. Red Hat really, uh, you know, everybody wants to be the Red Hat of whatever that next big thing is. Um, they've not only shown how to find the balance between, you know, being a profitable country a company, leading in that, uh, but as they talked about, sort of, you know, fostering communities, growing communities, contributing communities. They've, uh, you know, they've always found that way to find the right balance between sort of the economic side of this and the community side of it. 
Yeah, uh, we're going to have Target on. Uh, Elwin Loomis actually gave out little coins uh, that, that said they're, they're looking to form, form the Rebel Alliance. Uh, it, it's funny, I'm actually wearing my uh, Millennium Falcon cufflinks on here today. Uh, the Cube's always uh, great at helping to help customers understand that disruption, you know, how they can uh, move forward to it. Brian, what, what are you looking to gain uh, this week over the three days in our interviews? So, you know, I'm looking at sort of a lot of big trends. Uh, you know, a lot of talk about OpenShift, their container platform service, sometimes it used to be called a PaaS platform. You know, how fast is that segment of the market beginning to grow? We were at DockerCon last week. Uh, we, you know, we're looking at, you know, what's, what's the revenue, how fast? Really what I want to see in that space is, what are the technologies doing to help the applications get built faster? Not just the infrastructure, but how are the applications getting built faster? Um, you know, we're seeing just what are people doing in these communities? How, you know, how is it shaping their business? We're going like to say we're going to talk about Target, but we're going to talk about a lot of different other companies. I want to see sort of these big macro shifts because uh, you know, while Red Hat is sort of, like they said, the catalyst of this, uh, you've got to not only understand the catalyst company, but understand the, com the, the communities around that as well. So looking for those trends. Yeah, and uh, one thing I'm looking for, Brian, is if you look at, when we, we go to most of the infrastructure shows and they talk about the hybrid cloud world and how they interact with the public cloud, a lot of times it's, well, you know, you, you don't want to use AWS, you don't want to use GCP, you don't want to use Azure, or if you do, they, they try to deposition it. Red Hat's in a very interesting spot. Of course, they are a software company and, and the way they're positioned, I mean, I was talking to some Red Hat people and they said, it's really exciting that we are talking to and relevant and important to Microsoft. I yeah. mean, you know, we're, we're going to have a Microsoft person on, uh, on our third day of broadcast here uh, but you know where uh, Red Hat sits from kind of the on-prem, the SaaS, the public cloud, uh, all those pieces, uh, that I think, uh, Brian, we, we were going into the keynote, you said it's uh, you know, open source, mobility, uh, cloud, and big, uh, data. And, and, and big data, and Red Hat has a strong play across all of those, so you know, lots of areas for us to dig into. Um, be, before we get into our guest, Brian, let, let's talk a little bit about what, what's, what's going on with Wikibon uh, in your research, uh, cloud native applications is a big piece. Yep. Uh, for, for our audience, bring them up to speed as to you know, what you've been focused on the last couple of months. Yeah, really been, been focused on two big things. Uh, the first one we released uh, about a five part series on what we're calling a digital business platform. And a lot of it was you know, reiterated in the keynote today. It was this idea that uh, people are going to be building applications that are much more customer facing, so less about productivity, more about customer facing. Uh, what does that look like? It's API driven. We saw Red Hat make an acquisition around API platforms this last week. Uh, it's going to be data driven, data feedback loops. We talked about big data. Uh, and it's all about sort of the, the process of developing things being very DevOps driven, being very continuous deployment. So uh, we wrote a big piece, uh, a lot of research around that space. We think that's going to be drive of where things are going. And then we've got a, a, a big piece that's coming out this week around sort of the application decisions, the, the uh, architectural decisions that you're making around cloud native container centric platforms. Uh, OpenShift is going to be you know, a big piece of that and then we're going to look at you know, what else is going on in the ecosystem. So uh, those, those areas, at least for my research, are where I'm really focused on how is digital business, community, open source, uh, cloud native platforms, how are they all coming together and, and hopefully driving better applications? Yeah, absolutely. O OpenShift, I'm sure we're here a lot on. Uh, the, I think the stat I heard was there's three million applications uh, that live on OpenShift. You know, what does that mean for revenue? Uh, you know, where, where's Red Hat going? Uh, lots of different angles uh, for, for us to track into here. Uh, all right, so yeah, just basic blocking and tackling. SiliconAngle.tv is, is where we've got all the content here. Uh, going to have three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, if you have questions along the way, uh, feel free to hit us up on Twitter. I'm Stu, S-T-U on Twitter. Uh, Brian's B. Gracely on there. Uh, we've got lots of coverage here. Reach out to us, watch it, engage with it. Uh, as they, they say here at Red Hat, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not just showing up, but participating, uh, and we love that participation. So uh, stay tuned to all the coverage here, and thanks so much. You're watching theCUBE.